Hey, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and today I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put on the walking foot. Now, this is the removable walking foot from Bernina. This can fit, uh, this is a new style one, so this one fits on your three series, your four series, your 535. It can also fit on some older models, like an old Artista 180 or an Aurora 440 or any of those variations. There are also some benefits, I suppose, to putting a walking foot like this on your machines that have the Bernina dual feet. Now, me personally, if I'm doing straight line quilting on the machine that has dual feed, I just use one of my dual feed feet, but you might find it you know, helpful to put the walking foot on that too. So I'm gonna to show you how to put it on an 880 plus, and I'm gonna show you how to put it on a 475. Now also, there is a walking foot designed for the legacy machines. The legacy machines are like your standard old-fashioned 830 in that red case, a Bernina 1008, a Bernina 1260, 930, things like that. And so there's even one for those machines as well. So let's do some straight line quilting a la Catherine Redford, as you can see in some of the quilts behind me. And uh, let's see what we think about this Bernina walking foot. Let's talk about this walking foot. So first, here's the walking foot itself. So you've got your little piece here, I call it the fork, and that's gonna go over where the needle screws in. And that little guy, let's hold it up right for you. As the needle goes up and down, it moves those little grippies on the bottom, giving you the feed from the top, as well as the feed dogs that are gonna be underneath. So the Bernina walking feet, no matter if you buy the legacy version or if you buy the new version, you're gonna get two other soles that go with the foot. There's an open toe sole, the closed toe sole, and this stitch in the ditch sole that's really good for top stitching your bindings on. Then you can switch them out with the little screwdriver that they give you. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch mine out to this open toe foot. And you're gonna undo this piece here. See that little screw that's in there? You're gonna undo that. Pull the bottom off. Like that and then put whatever base you want on. So it goes like if you want this piece, you would put that one on and this one, you get it. And now we're gonna plop this into position here. And now we're gonna tighten that screw back. I'm gonna click back into position. So there we go, now we have the open toe sole on. And now sometimes when you do your quilting or cross hatching, you'll wanna draw like a diagonal line, but you don't wanna draw all of the lines. So you get this little piece here that's like a little hat, and then you have a right guide and a left guide that you can put into this. So I'm gonna put the right guide on. You just have to undo the screw until it fits through there. There we go. And then you would line it up by measuring where your needle is gonna be and everything. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Okay, and there it is, and that's snug, and that's not coming off. So now we're gonna take it first over to our Bernina 880 Plus. Let's talk about this walking foot. So first, here's the walking foot itself. So you've got your little piece here, I call it the fork, and that's gonna go over where the needle screws in, and that little guy, let's hold it up right for you, as the needle goes up and down, it moves those little grippies on the bottom, giving you the feed from the top, as well as the feed dogs that are gonna be underneath. So the Bernina walking feet, no matter if you buy the legacy version or if you buy the new version, you're gonna get two other soles that go with the foot. There's an open toe sole, the closed toe sole, and this stitch in the ditch sole that's really good for top stitching your bindings on. Then you can switch them out with the little screwdriver that they give you. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch mine out to this open toe foot. And you're gonna undo this piece here. See that little screw that's in there? You're gonna undo that. Pull the bottom off. like that. 
and then put whatever base you want on. So it goes like if you want this piece, you would put that one on and this one, you get it. And now we're gonna plop this into position here. And now we're gonna tighten that screw back. I'm gonna click back into position. So there we go, now we have the open toe sole on. And now sometimes when you do your quilting or cross hatching, you'll wanna draw like a diagonal line, but you don't wanna draw all of the lines. So you get this little piece here that's like a little hat, and then you have a right guide and a left guide that you can put into this. So I'm gonna put the right guide on. You just have to undo the screw until it fits through there. There we go. And then you would line it up by measuring where your needle's gonna be and everything. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Okay, and there it is, and that's snug, and that's not coming off. So now we're gonna take it first over to our Bernina 880 Plus. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is swing my magnifying glass out of the way there. And then let's just look at adding this foot coming at the front of the machine. So we're gonna slip that fork over the screw that holds on the needle and then we're just going to slip that right over the cone for the machine so this is a little lever that holds the foot on and we slip it on just like that and now as the needle goes up and down it moves the little rubber grippies now as you do your quilting or whatever you want to do i mean you could also use this foot to join plaids or any kind of thing like that but i like stitch number 1324 that's going to give us a tiny little stitch that's going to secure our stitch for us in the beginning like that and then it's going to continue to do our straight line quilting. And then when you're ready to end, you just press your quick reverse and that's gonna do a little knot for you. Now, straight line quilting is pretty cool. And as you can see here with this guide, I can even line this up right here next to the foot. Now that's a pretty tiny little stitch right there. So I'm gonna elongate this stitch to about 3.25. But let's go ahead and start our stitch again. I'm gonna bring my thread from my bobbin up. And now I'm gonna line this right up with our other stitching. Let's take out the safety pin. And you can see the difference there with the stitch length. So you would just find a stitch length that you like. Now, another stitch that you might like is a serpentine stitch if you're talking about quilting with the walking foot. And I'm just gonna pick stitch number 1397, but I do wanna remind you that I'm working on an 880 plus here, and normally I would do this stitching with a dual feed foot because I get the nine millimeter wide capability, but on our walking foot, it's only a five and a half millimeter opening. nonetheless you can see how cool that stitch is. So as you can see we just added that foot to our machine and we were able to just stitch, adjust our stitch length, pick a different stitch, and so let's see what this is like on the Bernina 475. 
So over here on our 475, it's pretty much the same story or as putting it on our 880. We're gonna slip this little guy. Now this one screw is a little bit larger than the screw that you see on the 880, but you just wanna fit it through here. And there's a little notch out of this foot where you can feed that cone through relatively easily so that you can get your foot on just like that. So on our 475, I've also chosen the straight stitch and adjusted the stitch length to be at 3.25. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing over here and just stitch. Now I can also bring my thread up to the top and now we're just gonna do a regular straight stitch. Now this machine also has a quilting section with the same stitch that we used before, only it's called stitch number 1318 on this machine. Right, so we have a little change of scenery right here. So here's our finished piece. I just went ahead with this pattern. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, this is good enough for a little hot pad or something, but really what I wanted to show you is how to do a binding with your walking foot. Now, I once I go around this, I'm gonna switch out that sole plate to that edge stitch sole I showed you so that I could show you how cool it is to be able to stitch the binding on by machine. But for now, we can just use the walking foot the way it is. So we're gonna start by leaving. I'm just gonna make a loop at the end. I'm not gonna miter this piece together. You'll see, you'll see. So I'm just gonna line this up, tuck our foot, tuck this under our foot and I'm actually using the black little grippy part of the walking foot as my guide for my seam allowance. So I'm going to lower my presser foot and stitch. And this isn't a lot different than any other way that you would sew your binding on except if you notice I'm sewing onto the back side of the quilt. I'm going to get to about a quarter of an inch or just over from the edge, back step and cut, lift the presser foot, and then I'm going to fold this back like so, and then together like this, and continue making sure to lower my presser foot. Same thing here, back tack and cut. Lift, pull this back, bring it down to the front. Lower the presser foot. Okay, so now it's time to take off our guide. We don't need that. And now I'm going to take this piece off and change to our sole plate that has the edge stitch part on it. So we're going to put that right into place, right under the little grippies. And then we're gonna tighten this back into position. And then you need to wiggle this up and down just a little bit to get it right into the right spot. And now everything looks good. 
and it's ready to go on the machine. And now here's the difference. You can see that little guide right there. We're gonna line that up against the folded edge of our binding. Okay, so now what I've done here is we're kind of making like a little hot pad trivet or something like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm sticking to my straight stitch and we're going to stitch this into place just like this. This is our little tab. There we go. And now I'm going to line that up to the right side of this guide and I'm moving my needle position two notches to the right. And I'm gonna lower my presser foot and now I'm gonna stitch. And now that's gonna hold that into position. I just gotta wiggle a little bit here. Get everything ready. And now you can see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover that previous stitching with just a little bit of fabric. And I like doing that with a stiletto. Just like that. And I did press this at the iron before I brought it over here to my machine. Just so I had a nice crisp edge and I could get my miters just perfect. And I'm also using white thread. I probably in another application might try to match my thread a little bit better, but at least you're able to see what's happening here since I have the white thread. Tuck that little guy under there. There we go. Get everybody happy. There we go. Now we're going to lift and pivot. Get this right into position there. But that guide on this foot right there makes everything so easy. It just falls right into place. Now I'm going to pivot again. Now, if I had the knee lever in my machine, it would be much easier, but right now the camera is riding right there. And then when you see the little corners there and we go to the back, And that's how you do a quilt binding by machine. All right, so now that you are able to put on your walking foot, hopefully you find many uses for this. Of course, it adds wonderful dual feed to the machines that do not have built-in dual feed. And it could also be like a little set of training wheels <laughs> for your regular Bernina 880 and other machines with the dual feed. So thanks so much for watching. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy, it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe.